on today's show. The new Jeep Compass marks a major milestone for the brand. We'll tell you why. And did you know the data generated by your car could be worth a fortune? And why new car shows are under threat. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the show for enthusiasts of the automotive industry. The new Jeep Compass represents a major milestone for the brand. It's the last vehicle in the lineup to get completely overhauled ever since Chrysler emerged from bankruptcy. And the designers hit on what they think is going to be a great way to make this thing sell. They made it look a lot like the Grand Cherokee, but at a much lower price. A base compass starts around $22,000, while a well-equipped one will go for around $36,000. Depending on how they're equipped, that means the compass is anywhere from $7,000 to $15,000 cheaper than the Grand Cherokee. The only engine offered in the U.S. market is the 2.4-liter Tiger Shark. It's adequate for the task, but is kind of buzzy when you really put your foot into it. There's a choice of three transmissions, a six-speed manual or automatic, or a nine-speed automatic. Most models will deliver around 25 miles per gallon combined. Make no mistake, this is a true Jeep. The Trailhawk trim line is especially equipped for the task and will climb in and out of situations that other crossovers could never even consider. There's a lot more details we have about the Compass, and we'll be reporting on that in AutoLine Daily all next week. As we reported yesterday, Volkswagen executive Oliver Schmidt was arranged in court in Detroit yesterday after being accused of playing a major role in covering up the diesel emission scandal. Schmidt is pleading not guilty. As we said yesterday, we'll wait to see the results of his trial before we draw any conclusions about what he did. Five other VW executives were indicted in addition to Schmidt, but Germany does not have an extradition treaty with the United States, so they may not have to stand trial here. Schmidt was arrested while vacationing in Florida after alerting U.S. authorities that he would be coming to the country. And in other Volkswagen news, the company's teasing an all-new car called the Arteon that debuts at the Geneva Auto Show. We have no idea what that name means, but at least it's not a jumble of numbers and letters. Clearly, this is a successor to the Volkswagen CC, and it's going to be positioned above the Passat. There's not much to see in these teaser shots, but it's obviously a fastback. Also, VW is making a big deal of how the headlights and grille combine to form a completely new front-end design. Like everyone else in the business, it's all about making that grille look as big as they can make it. Hey, did you know that the data generated by your car could be worth a fortune? That's coming up next. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires. Your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. And by Yen Feng, experience in motion. It sure is amazing to see how much cleaner the air is today than in the past. Cars now emit 99% fewer tailpipe emissions than they did in the 1960s. And yet, in another decade, they're going to be 90% cleaner than they are today. When we get to the year 2025, automakers will meet what the EPA calls Tier 3 Bin 30 emission levels. That means in most cities, when you drive your car, you're going to be cleaning up the air. The exhaust coming out of the tailpipe is going to be cleaner than the air going into the engine, at least when measuring carbon monoxide, oxides of nitrogen, and particulate matter. In other words, less poison, less smog, and less lung cancer. It's a remarkable achievement and a good reminder that the automotive industry is making significant progress in cleaning up the environment. A couple of weeks ago, we reported on how Chevrolet collected 4,220 terabytes of data from customers' cars in the American market last year. Did you realize that data can be worth a fortune? Retailers, advertisers, marketers, product planners, financial analysts, government agencies, and so many others will eagerly pay to get access to that information. McKinsey, the giant consulting firm, 
forecast that this could grow into a $450 billion to $750 billion market by 2030. And it's a gift that keeps on giving. You can sell the same data again and again and again to a variety of different customers. Even better, the profit margins can be high as 90% compared to 10% margins in the core car business. And this is one of the main reasons why automakers are so eager to get into this emerging market of mobility services. It's a brand new market that's going to grow far faster than the automotive business. Say, are auto shows headed for extinction? We'll take a closer look at that right after this. Yin Fung Automotive Interiors transforms how people experience vehicle interiors by creating the next living space where look, feel, and function are seamlessly integrated. To open the door to tomorrow's vehicle interiors, visit Yen Fung Automotive Interiors at YFAI.com. The CES show is sure becoming an important destination for automakers, and that's taking away some of the enthusiasm from the Detroit Auto Show, which starts just days after CES. But it's not just the Detroit show that's in trouble. Car makers in general are skipping auto shows much more frequently. So can auto shows even survive? That is the topic on AutoLine this week, and here's what my panel and I have to say about it. But we're, we're talking about several things when it comes to these shows. There's the media days, and that's what we've really been concentrating on. Now, you guys for the Detroit Auto Show have created automobility. Right. You know, the Frankfurt Show's doing the same thing, the sure. LA sh Show's doing it. And then you got public days. Well, public days, I mean, those are fantastic, and that's what I think you're talking about. Right. The energy is great. Right. There's so many exciting things to do on the floor, all these different driving simulators. So even if the kids aren't interested in the cars, they right. got something to play around in. Right. So we're really talking about three different things here, a media show, a business show, and the public days. I don't think the public days will ever go away. But when you have automakers not even showing up, I mean, you're, you're cheating the public. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, th I think we don't have very many that didn't show up. We have some some brands that have historically been in and out of shows, mm -hmm. uh, but the, the major brands but are here. Sam, and I'm not picking on Detroit. Like I said, yeah. there was a half a dozen that skipped uh, the Paris sure. show. There were sure. those that skipped L.A. They're skipping Detroit. I think we'll see the same thing at, uh, at the Frankfurt show in Geneva. Right. Well, I think a lot of manufacturers, we were talking about this earlier, believe that they can do it through social media. And I don't think that's the case. And overall, will auto shows go away? No, because when you get out of the Motor City bubble and you go to other parts of the country, they look forward to the auto show coming. It's their only chance to see everything. Right. So, and, right. and I thought the Detroit show, unfortunately, lacks the manufacturers where you didn't see everything because they didn't show up. So that was unfortunate. To see more of that debate on the future of auto shows, you can watch that entire episode right now on our website, autoline.tv, or look for it on our YouTube channel. But that wraps up today's show. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. We'll see you right back here again on Monday. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.